Next, we'll turn our uh, attention to uh, acids and bases. Now, for acids and bases, there's a couple of different definitions. Uh, we'll focus on two. One is known as the Arrhenius definition of acids. So the Arrhenius definition of acids states that an acid is any substance or any molecule that produces an H plus ion in solution. So an example of an acid uh, for this definition would be hydrochloric acid. So HCl, uh, when you throw it into water, it, um, it actually separates just like ionic compounds did in solution. But since this is a molecule, we call this process ionization. So it ionizes to form an H plus ion and the chloride ion. And so that H plus ion uh, can uh, be involved in reactions, uh, which are called acidic properties, and that's uh, essentially where the acid, uh, the acid chemistry comes from, is that H plus ion that's produced in solution. The Arrhenius definition of bases is any solution or any compound that produces a hydroxide ion in solution. solution. So a good uh, example of that would be uh, sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide we know is an inorganic, uh, I excuse me, ionic compound. Um, it is an inorganic compound and either as well, but anyways, so when you dissolve that into water we know that ionic compounds dissociate to form ions in solution. The sodium and the hydroxide separate uh, it would be considered an electrolyte, which we pr previously discussed. Um, but anyways, sodium hydroxide produces a hydroxide uh, ion in solution, and therefore it is an Arrhenius base. The second definition of acids and bases is known as the Bronsted-Lowry definition. The Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases, and it's a little bit more inclusive to other molecules that have acidic or basic properties. Um, for Bronsted-Lowry, an acid is a molecule or compound, so I'll say a substance, that can donate a uh, H plus ion. And since an H plus cation, a hydrogen cation, uh, is just a proton, a hydrogen atom has one proton, one electron. If it lost its electron, it's a proton. It's often called a proton donor because of the H plus cation is just a proton. All right, so HCl was our example uh, acid for uh, Bronsted, or excuse me, Arrhenius definition of acids. And it can be an acid for Bronsted-Lowry definition of course, as well. Uh, we just have to uh, talk about what it donates the H plus ion to. And that, of course, since it is an aqueous solution, it donates it to water. Water is uh, what is going to accept that proton. And so hydrogen HCl donates the H plus ion to water. And that will actually form the H3O plus ion, which is the hydronium ion. And Cl minus is still left over. So that is what really happens in solution. And so uh, essentially, uh, Bronsted-Lowry uh, definition is also a little bit uh, more exact. That H plus ion that ionizes um, from HCl is uh, very strongly attracted to the lone pair of electrons on the water molecule, and so it forms H3O plus ion uh, almost immediately, I would bet. Okay, so um, a base in Bronsted-Lauer definition 
is any uh, substance that can accept the H plus ion. And of course hydroxide can uh, accept H plus ions to form water. But the, this definition of acids explains the uh, basic properties for uh, nitrogen containing molecules like ammonia. Ammonia uh, can accept hydrogen ions and if you place ammonia and H3 in water it will accept a hydrogen ion from water and produce the ammonium polyatomic ion NH4 plus plus hydroxide is what's left over when hydrogen uh, donates its uh, water donates a hydrogen ion to ammonia and so we can still see that uh, the Arrhenius definition is still maintained produces a hydroxide in solution but in terms of uh, ammonia, how it does that is it actually accepts a H plus ion from water. Uh, in these two uh, scenarios, we can see that water is involved in both these processes, and in each process, water is doing something different. Water, in the case of HCl, water is accepting a proton to form hydronium, which makes it a base. And in this scenario, water is donating a hydrogen ion to ammonia, and of course, in this case, that makes it an acid. And so water is uh, a substance that's called amphoteric, a substance that can act uh, like a base or an acid. It can donate or accept um, H plus ions. Amphoteric substances. that can accept or donate, I should say and or donate, because of course some substances uh, like amino acids and proteins can do both at the same time, or donate H plus ions. All right, uh, so let's talk about uh, a couple of differences between uh, acids and bases. Uh, we can actually um, categorize um, acids and bases as either strong or weak. All right, so strong acids are acids that ionize or donate 100% of their H plus ions. So ionize 100% um, or donate 100% of their ions. And a good example of that was HCl. When we showed the uh, ionization of HCl for using the Arrhenius definition, we drew one straight arrow from uh, left to right, H plus plus a chloride ion. Um, and so they do that 100% of the time. So in solution, if you have a hydrochloric acid solution, uh, you have 100% of the ions, H plus and chloride, or even if you want to think about it as hydronium, 100% hydronium and chloride, you have zero HCl molecules uh, left over. It is all ions. Uh, strong bases are the same way. They produce 100% of the um, hydroxide ions. 100% of hydroxide ions are produced. And uh, the strong um, bases are only soluble hydroxide compounds. And those are primarily group 1 and group 2 hydroxide ions. So potassium hydroxide is a strong base because when you dissolve it in water, it produces 100% uh, hydroxide ions. None of the hydroxide ions stay with the potassium hydroxide. It's 100% dissociation. 
And so that's actually a better way to explain this 100% of hydroxide ions are produced, or what we could say is 100% dissociation. All right. So that is um, different for weak acids and weak bases. So weak acids are acids that do not ionize 100% or do not donate 100% of their ions. All right. So a good example of this would be acetic acid, which is in vinegar. Okay, and we can do it either way. We can talk about it in terms of the Arrhenius definition. We talk about ionization. Um, it uh, ionizes to form H plus ion plus acetic, or excuse me, the acetate ion. Notice that the uh, polyatomic ion doesn't break up. It's just the uh, hydrogen ion that uh, is... Uh, separates or ionizes. What happens is that it actually doesn't produce 100% of the ions, and so I actually made a mistake. I shouldn't write a full arrow from left to right. What I need to write is a half arrow left and a bottom half arrow as well. So uh, indicate that these ions are both, uh, both the ions and the molecule is present. So essentially what happens is the uh, molecule ionizes and then the ions re- uh, connect or this hydrogen protonates this acetate polyatomic ion to form the uh, acetic acid uh, molecule again. And so we could write this in terms of the uh, Bronsted Lowry definition as well. We can say that acetic acid donates its proton to water. And it does this back and forth, which is known as equilibrium, sets up equilibrium to form the hydronium ion and the acetate polyatomic ion. So this uh, forward reaction, the acetic acid donates uh, its proton to water, is happening at the same rate that the hydronium ion is donating its uh, acetate ion back to, or Hydronium donates the hydrogen back to the acetate polyatomic ion. So these reactions go back and forth. Um, and it's less than 100%. So in solution, you have some molecules and some ions. And the uh, concentration of the ions depends on how strong or uh, the weak acid is. Um, as well as the concentration. The same uh, type of setup occurs for weak bases. Uh, ammonia, or nitrogen containing compounds, was uh, our first example, and it's still a good one here. So we notice that uh, it reacts with water, it, it will accept a proton from water, but it does so uh, in a fashion that's less than 100%. So same thing, it's going to set up equilibrium, so we need to write back and forth arrows, and it will produce uh, ammonium ions when it accepts that proton and the hydroxide ion. But it doesn't do it 100%. There's some of the ammonium and hydroxide ions present and then some ammonia molecules uh, by themselves present in the solution uh, all at the same time.